So let's uh, move now to Grimes. Uh, we'll maybe get to some questions. About but, somebody who's never sold out. Yeah. So um, Grimes, who I, I won't uh, lie, I enjoyed the album Oblivion years ago. It came out like, I think it's like 2013 at this point, maybe even later ago. Some fun sort of dark synth energy there. Um, mainly the music. I. I don't know the lyrics um it's all very ethereal but uh i don't like her music enough to like want to revisit it while she's you know basically elon musk's um uh well girlfriend or whatever they are uh, wife are they married now baby mama now baby mama but no, okay maybe not married. no they're married they're married. They married okay okay yeah i i guess i'm a little bit behind on that whatever like sort of magazine i don't miss any of that dude i get like I'm, i get all the updates so and i don't really know a whole lot about grimes as a person i feel like she might have been a rich kid growing up um i feel like i heard that maybe i'm wrong about that but anyway i'm actually I, i'm pretty sure i'm not wrong about that but let's uh go to her tiktok she cut this herself this isn't like somebody uh, making a compilation of dumb things said about communism so this is grimes and I just I would love to have bugged her conversation with Elon on, on, <laughs> on, on the, this sort of topic. Like, <laughs> and we'll play this clip as David collects some stuff here. I have a proposition for the communists. Um, so typically, most of the communists I know are not big fans of AI. But if you think about it, AI is actually the fastest path to communism. <sighs> so if implemented correctly, AI could actually theoretically solve for abundance. Like we could totally get to a situation where nobody has to work. Everybody is provided for with a comfortable state of being, comfortable living. AI could automate all the farming, weed out systematic corruption, thereby bringing us to as close as possible to genuine equality. So basically everything that everybody loves about communism, but without the collective farm. Because let's be real, enforced farming is really not a vibe. Oh boy! Sorry, I was choking on those words, man. <laughs> Even like preliminary. All right. I mean, where do we want to start with it? Uh, look, let's start with the the communism stuff, right? Um, do not let me forget because I have some hot takes about why Grimes is so devastating um, for some people. Her her shift and and love with Elon Musk, <laughs> but. <clears throat> I mean, the communism stuff is, is just absurd. I mean, what is she talking about? The communists that she knows. Um, I can't <laughs> imagine what kind of political caliber of a, of a person that is, right? It's like, you know, it's, it's the kind of thing that we rail on against constantly as people who feel like, oh, politics is like my identity or it's like a clothing that I get to wear um, versus the process that you do with other people. Um, absolutely insane. Um, and I think, th I mean, the, the quick cheap and easy point to make with crimes is we live in a world where all of these advances in technology have not improved the lives of working people of everyday people, but in fact have lined the pockets of people like her fucking husband. While enclosing those workers. Sorry. While, while enclosing and surveilling those workers and basically yeah. continuing them to work as hard as we're working without uh, these commensurate increase in wages. And any communist worth their salt, I mean, unless it's, it's just purely performative, I'm assuming has some understanding of like dialectics and, and Marxism, um, should understand that technology in itself is not some kind of process that's separate um from the you know the material relations of society to put that concretely if somebody owns all the machines they get to use those to extract um surplus value from the labor of the people who are operating those machines that's capitalism 101 it was capitalism 101 when they invented mechanized processes um for producing clothing food you name it right why do you think that that's not the case with you know artificial intelligence um i mean it's history is pointing in every in the same direction with all of this i'm sorry like i'm much more like amenable to like the andrew yang freak out about ai than i am to this kind of utopian fixation that is just going to solve all of our problems without any kind of political struggle 
Right, right. Which I mean doesn't uh, address basic questions a communist would ask, which is like, who owns the AI? Like, who's directing yeah. this AI? Or and I think I'll just guess what Grimes would say. Uh, I think she would say, I'm getting a little bit of feedback, but I think she would say that the AI is, supersedes humanity uh, because it's smarter than humans, which, which I'd say, like, we already have machines that have all of human information. Like, it, by certain measures, they are smarter than a human beings. Mm -hmm. Tell them to fucking put some legislature together, leg legislation together. They can't do that, right? That's not what they're, ba that's not the kind of smartness that it's being made for. That's a good point. And we're not going to just reproduce that, like, I, anytime fucking soon. It's a complete pipe dream. The, you know, the best way to compute the best thing for everybody is to fucking ask everybody what they want via some sort of democ democracy. That's yeah. it, right? Like, that's, that's how you do it. So I'm not surprised that somebody dating a guy that's like extracting Married. valuable minerals um thinks that democracy isn't the best way uh, to solve these things but uh, yeah and look I, i'm all for like i don't like you know stuff that's too utopian um just in the sense that i think it like actually depoliticizes struggle right because right. it's like you're just like fantasizing all the time it's not productive but i'm all like dude matt and i i'm, I'm i have a soft spot no matter as as hard as i try to be a, a good cold analytical uh, Marcus, I have a soft spot for all of that kind of stuff. I love Oscar Wilde's quotes, like a map without utopia isn't worth looking at, right? Like I'm all about that, right? And I think you can use the potential like as like a thought experiment, um, you know, or, or, or point that like, oh, I can imagine a, a world where people's needs are met. And things um, are, are much better and that we don't have to spend all of our time laboring for the profit of, of someone else. Right. I think that that's great as long as you make the point, which she doesn't hear, um, that the thing that's stopping that from happening is not the scientific possibility. Right. Like the actual constraints of like the physical world, but the constraints of the political world and the economic world. What I mean by that is class society. You know, the, the class that she's bought into uh, right now is what's preventing us from being able to achieve or hell at least aspire um, to those kind of, uh, you know, that, that kind of world. Like, I like the idea that like, never mind the communist she hangs out, but the capitalists, like talk to the capitalists around you Grimes and ask them if they want this world where everyone has a rough uh, equal, like allocation of resources from the God AI. Like, do you think yeah. that's really the way that, no, it's going to be, we need the AI to distribute to the, like the percentage of society that contributes the most with, right? Like, of course, that's how it's going to be designed. Look at this. Um, I mean, pretty sad though. Like, honestly, like, to s occasional tweet here or there is one thing, but like, Grimes is not smart, um, I don't think, unfortunately. <laughs> like, and, well, Go ahead. <laughs> I was just going to say, this is like my hot, like Grimes is very frightening to a very specific person. Um, like she's frightening and, and like upsetting, obviously, because she's saying nonsense and she's like, you know, married into this, this horrible system and, and horrible person. But she's very, very like upsetting to a kind of like, these are people I spend my time with. I spend my times with, you know, freaks and weirdos and rednecks. Right. Um, but, uh, she is like representative of like the kind of scene girl, countercultural girl or person, right? That we all sort of know from college and high school, right? Who's very radical, very like F the man kind of thing. Um, and, and facing like, you know, kind of like mid adulthood, you know, mid, you know, mid to early 30s and making that decision to essentially become to buy into the system you know marrying a super rich billionaire um start making excuses for it and shedding the clothing of your like radical um <clears throat> you know of, of your like earlier radical ambitions um but but even worse than that not just saying like oh i've seen the light and like this kind of like more like right wing or conservative like way of life is what i'm accepting mm -hmm. but actually trying to use like the radical language of like your youth and like your freedom and your rebellion to justify your conservative choices yeah 
you know? And yeah. I think that for some people, it's a very frightening thing. Not necessarily because they're saying, oh, I'm doing this. Like, I don't know. It's, it's something that people definitely don't want to do themselves. And seeing somebody who they have sort of grown up with is like, you know, it's very jolting. Yeah. Her mother, Sandy Garasino, is a former crown prosecutor and arts advocate. Her farmer is a former banker who works in the business side of biotech. And so not the science side of biotech, the business side. So. Oh, there you go. Interesting. She didn't have to go too far. Yeah, it wasn't it wasn't uh, much of a uh, uh, you know fall. <laughs>